Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo here. Thanks for joining me. I'm doing a follow-up video today on this, which is my Bridgeport mill, uh, just installed recently. And it was truly surprising the number of people who either owned a Bridgeport and were totally in love with it or wanted to own a Bridgeport. I had no idea there was so much love out there for, for these machines. And what I thought would be interesting is to run you through the budget that I worked on when I bought this machine. And I guess there'd be a lot of people in a similar position to me that uh, truly want to own one of these, but then worry about, you know, how much does it cost? So I've broken it down and I've uh, got some figures that uh, you might find interesting. Now just bear in mind, I live in Australia and uh, we're talking Australian dollars here, which are at the moment worth about, uh, what, about 65 US cents. So if you looking at this from overseas and wondering why it all seems so expensive, well, that's why. Anyway, let's drill down into the figures and just see how it all breaks down. Now, when I finally made the decision to buy one of these things, I started looking around on eBay to begin with, and I found that there were a few machines available in Australia, but you need to keep in mind that I live in Queensland. Most of the machinery that gets sold uh, is either in Melbourne or Sydney or Adelaide. So we're talking you know, 1,500, 1,600 kilometres away. And with the, the uh, lockdown conditions, the travel restrictions, it meant that there was no way I was going to be able to get to see the machine in person. So I had to rely on the vendor taking photographs for me and I inspected the photographs very closely. I was trying to narrow down my search to a machine that had as little wear on it as possible. The website that I went to was called Machines For You and uh, they're like a clearing house for industrial machinery but the actual vendor was uh, a company called Newmac Machinery. Now the list price for this particular mill was $4,500 Australian. And what I tend to do is I'll look at the list price and then I'll double it. And then I'll figure that that's what it's gonna cost me to have it sitting in my workshop at the end of the day. Uh, as you see in a minute, that turned out to be pretty close. Now remember the prices that uh, are quoting there is uh, not including GST, which is 10% here in Australia. In the end, the invoiced price for the Bridgeport mill from Newmark Machinery was $4,950. I also inquired about getting a horizontal attachment for this milling machine because I have a number of side and face cutters and slitting saws that I wanted to be able to use. Now the vendor happened to have one sitting on the shelf and he listed a price of $200 or $220 including GST and I decided to purchase that as well. Now the freight, this is where, this is the killer, right? Getting a machine like this uh, from south part of Australia right up to where I live on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, that was quoted at $495 including GST to get it from Melbourne to Brisbane, which is uh, my nearest capital city. So all up, the subtotal from Newmac Machinery was $5,665 and that landed the machine in Rockley in Brisbane. So I paid that price and I got the machine to Brisbane and then I then had to negotiate to get a uh, crane truck to bring it the rest of the way. So it's roughly 150 kilometers from Brisbane to where I live. And I was quoted $605, including GST, to get the mill from Brisbane to where I live at Timbiwa. You're probably thinking, hang on, it costs $495 to get it from Melbourne to Brisbane. And then the, just a short hop to get it up to here was 605. But remember, it came up from Melbourne on a semi-trailer and it would have been part of a much, much bigger load. So uh, when it came from Brisbane, it was the only piece of freight on the truck, so I was paying the full price of freight, uh, plus road tolls and tax and everything else. So at the end of the day, my total outlay to get the machine to my door was $6,270. Now, that's only part of the story. <laughs> and the rest of the budget ended up going on tooling, new R8 tooling for the machine and a rotary phase converter. Now I'll look at the rotary phase converter in a minute. Before I could even use the machine I needed tooling for it. Now my old milling machine was all Morse tape at three so I had all of my uh, collet chucks and boring head and side face cutter arbor were all Morse tape at three and I wasn't going to work with this machine. So let's 
Let's take a look at what I bought and we'll break down the costs for the tooling. This is nearly all of the RA tooling I had to buy for the mill. There's, there's one item still to come. But I thought I'd run you through what I bought and the costs for those as well. Now I already had ER40 collets and ER25 collets so I needed chucks for both of those. The ER40 collet uh, was $74 and the ER25 was $75. Go figure, I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, that was what I paid. This is a stub milling arbor. I've got a number of uh, Involute gear cutters and side and face cutters and with the horizontal attachment that you've already seen, I can run those uh, attached to the quill. And that particular item there was $106. I already had this boring head uh, and luckily these arbors just screw on to the boring head itself. So that particular unit was $145. Got a feeling that one came from the USA, which would account for its high cost. Also have a number of number three and number two uh, drill bits, number uh, that is Morse taper. So I needed it, an adapter that went from number three Morse taper to R8. And that was the cheapest unit at $29. Also got a 16 millimeter keyless chuck for smaller drill bits and center drill bits and spotting drills and so on. Uh, that one worked out $85.34. Now the item that hasn't yet turned up is a, an arbor for a shell mill. So this style of thing here, I've got two different heads and they just simply attach to that arbor there. But this is the number three Morse taper. The one that's still to come was $36 and uh, that's coming from China and I've, I've been waiting forever to get that one. But that's the, the tooling that I've got, and no doubt I'll, I'll pick up some more along the way, but that's enough to get me going with nearly all of the tooling I already have. Now, one of the great things about having a bridge port is the way you can articulate the head on these machines. So it can be tilted and pivoted into all sorts of different configurations. But at some point, you will want to be able to return that head to being truly vertical to the table or to the vise. That process is called tramming, and the easiest way to do it is to buy a tool like this. Now, I watched uh, two videos, one by Keith Rucker and one by Randy Richards, uh, where they reviewed this particular tool. And I, I was just struck by the look of it. It looks fantastic. And the good thing about this is that you can move the two indicators into any one of four positions along this arm. So you can bring it close together if you want to tram a very narrow vise or further apart if you want to span the T-slots in your table and it's all CNC machine. These are little laser cut uh, tags that go into those pockets there and it, it's just a nice unit. And uh, when I saw the name of the company that made these, I figured that um, oh, it's, this is just a play on words for um, something to do with boring in the, the head of the, the milling machine. But it turns out they're made in Boring, Oregon. So PO Box 1451 <laughs> Boring, Oregon. And it's paired with a sister city in Scotland called Dull. So there you go. And the really cool thing is it comes with a sticker. Come on, Mark, get it straight. Yes, I've got merch. So there you go, that's the beginning of my sticker wall. Uh, big thanks to Craig down in Craig's workshop in Tasmania. Check out his channel, he does some awesome work. And that's an outline drawing of his beautiful little Powell mill. Already trammed ahead using this and it was a piece of cake basically. Now that particular unit wasn't cheap, uh, mainly because it came from the USA and I had to pay the shipping on it. But that worked out to $257.27. So all up, the total cost of all of the tooling came to $810.31. But that gives me the capability now to use all my existing tools in this particular mill. Okay, so we need to talk about electricity. This machine, as I said, is 415 volts, three phase. My power supply in the workshop here is 240 volts, single phase. Now there were a number of options that I could have gone with when I bought the machine. One option would have been to have the motor rewound from 415 volts to 240 volts, three phase, and then use a variable frequency drive for the main motor on the head. But there's a complication. 
there's a coolant pump in the bottom of the machine which I pull out here at the moment and then there's also the motor for the x-axis power feed. Now this one here is three phase it's got on the motor plate it's got a number of uh, voltages I don't know how it's wired but I'm assuming it's wired up so that it would operate from 415 volts three phase. The motor in the x-axis power feed is 110 volts three phase and there's a transformer around the side here which uh, supplies the power for the x-axis motor. If I was to convert this using a variable frequency drive that's only going to work for the head and the other two motors then are going to be left on their own. Another option was to purchase a thing called a boosted VSD. Now there's a company in Melbourne that I ended up using uh, called ASA Industry and they supplied a unit which was basically a transformer which went from 240 volt single phase to 415 volt single phase and then it had a variable speed drive that piggybacked onto the transformer and that gave you the 415 volts three phase. It was an expensive unit, around about $1,000 plus shipping. And the representative I spoke to talked me out of getting that unit. He I acknowledged that I was gonna have a problem with the other two motors in the machine. And I believe that variable speed drives don't produce a truly clean source of three phase power. So there are high frequency spikes uh, in that power supply and he suggested that was going to be a problem with any accessories that I had on the machine. Now in the end I went for this unit. Now this is a rotary phase converter. The exact model here is a PRC2003 and this is a true plug and play solution. So on the back of the unit here, there's a four pin three phase plug, which is three phases plus neutral. And there's a plug in for 15 amps, 240 volts. So I had a 15 amp socket available. So I just plugged this unit into that. And then the existing plug that came from my mill, that you might've seen in the last video that I did, plugs into this unit here and I just switch this unit on and then the machine operates exactly as it would have if it was still connected to its three phase supply. Now the idler motor on top here artificially generates the third leg of the three phases and the only downside of this is that it's a chunky big unit. The motor is a little bit noisy it's, but it's running in the background so you tend not to notice it and it's just a green start button on the front here so if I press that I've got to hold that in long enough for this motor to get up to speed. I'm going to let it stop that again. I was warned about this, you, you've actually got to physically hold it in for this unit to come up to speed. So that's it, that motor will just sit there idling away. It's not consuming any power other than to keep it running. So it's not under load and as such um, these types of motors when they're operating at normal running speed, they consume very little current. It's only when you actually load them up that they start to use a lot of energy. So that's the way I went with this. It's not a cheap unit though. Uh, to get this up here to my door was $2,365. And you're probably reeling in shock at this time and saying, well, gee, that's, that's almost half the cost of the mill. But like I said, it's a plug and play solution. Now the coolant pump, is not working at the moment. I don't know why that is. That's why it's sitting out there, hanging out the back of the machine. I've got to investigate that further. But in theory, it should still be connected. I traced the wiring back to the switch box. It's still connected. So either it's seized, the impeller is seized, or there's something else going on which I'll need to investigate. But let's go and look at the x-axis power feed because that does work. So the rotary phase converter is running there now. And there's our power feed. Now that all works exactly as it's intended to and I didn't have to mess with any wiring to get this running. So with the main switch panel here, all the contact is still work. I can switch on, contact that clicks in, and then I can use the forward reverse switch on the head of the machine to run that. So let's have a look at that. So that's it working there. And the variable speed drive still works and it sounds to me like it's in fairly good condition. Now I've got nothing to compare this to, so anybody out there who owns a Bridgeport might already say, well that's worn out, you need to investigate that, but to me it sounds okay. So let's just try that.
So I may be a bit noisy, but to me it's serviceable at the moment, and I may further down the track decide to dig into the head and actually see what's going on in there, but for the moment it's all working. Okay, so I'm guessing you're saying, all right, what's the, what's the grand total, what's the bottom line? Now with everything I just showed you, including uh, all the tooling, the boring research, tramming, head, the rotary phase converter, plus all the shipping for everything that we've seen, the grand total was $9,445.31. And for the old mill, I got a price of $2,000. Now, that's not what I was asking, that's eventually what I got when I sold it. And I took $7,000 out of my superannuation <laughs> as my starting budget. And I don't have a problem spending my children's inheritance. Um, that's, there's going to be plenty left over for them. But with my budget of $7,000 plus $2,000 for the sale of the oil mill, I got $9,000 in total. So I was over budget by about $445. Now, there's still some sundry items that I need to purchase for this. So I bought three types of oil for the machine, lubrication oil, so there's a whey oil, a spindle oil, and a general lubrication oil. That's still to come. I've also purchased a book that was recommended to me which goes into the restoration uh, or disassembly and restoration of this particular mill. Also, uh, I splashed out and bought myself a nice Michitoyo digital vernier caliper. Uh, that's something I've always wanted and it's useful around the shop anyway. I already had a K-type uh, milling vise and like I say, I've already got a supply of cutters and uh, most of the other tooling that I will need. So, uh, what else? Ah, oh, ah, oh, we need to look at the oiler, hang on. <laughs> this is a thing that I haven't included in the, the total costs we looked at. But in my last video, I showed you this particular device here was broken and this, this pipe which goes inside the, the knee was damaged. Now it turns out that that just pulls out of there and I'm pretty sure that, that is the lubrication line for the Z-axis screw. I've been able to get a new piece of copper pipe. I've got the fitting on the end of it and that can feed back through that same hole but I need to be able to connect it in at the other end and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Now that will fit through there, that's not a problem. Now the, the little broken bit that was on there turned out to be a metering valve, a number one, and I could find them on uh, Amazon, the, the USA version of Amazon. Cost about $15 to $18, but the shipping price to Australia was outrageous, as it always is. I managed to get one from a company in Melbourne. It's an original Beecher unit, number one with the correct thread and it screws into the manifold block here without a problem. Total cost for that $65, <laughs> which I don't get it, but anyway, that's, that's what it was and I paid that. I took the little manifold off here and I sandblasted and powder coated that and it's gone back on. So it's just a matter now of connecting up the, the lube line. Now having said that, there's still issues with the lubrication system and it needs to be investigated. So the next step is to take off the table, the saddle, and I'm thinking maybe the knee. And then I can do a proper inspection and you know make sure everything that's hidden at the moment is looking good, and then we can get it back together again. So uh, that's where we're at with the, the loop system. I'm looking, that's looking positive. I think that's gonna work out okay. Just one other thing I forgot to mention about the rotary phase converter, and that is that it's adaptable. So if I ever do get any more three-phase machinery, I can just simply wheel that unit over to that machine and plug in, and away I go. So that was another reason why I went down that road, to get that more expensive solution. Not that I'm ever likely to get any more big three-phase machines, but you never know. And in closing, I just wanted to, to thank a few people uh, who've helped out with this project. Now, there's a gentleman named Smitty, he got in touch with me. He offered me a complete lube system for this machine and I uh, was completely blown away. I mean, that's, that's not a cheap option. And at that point, I'd already committed to buying the restrictor valve that I showed you. And uh, as much as I appreciated the offer, I uh, declined because I think I can resurrect the unit that I've got. There's also uh, Bob Vines who got in touch. He gave me a heads up on a book which covers a complete disassembly and restoration of this exact same mill. And I've ordered that and I'm just waiting for that to arrive. A gentleman named Trevor from Auckland and New Zealand who got in touch, he had a rubber cover for the rapid switch on the x-axis power feed. 
the one that I've got was all perished and, and ruined and he offered that to me free of charge as well as a gift and he put it in the mail for me and I'm just waiting on that to turn up so uh, that was awesome too because I had no idea where I was going to get a replacement for that and finally uh, Frank who I went down to visit yesterday he's got a, a workshop not far from where I live and he offered me this absolutely awesome but completely mad gift which I've got in the trailer outside uh, it just blew me away um, uh, I'll, maybe I'll show it uh, in a future video but it was uh, yeah completely mad okay to sum up um, was it worth it for me yes it was I know that sounds like a lot of money that I outlined in this video but to me it was worth it because I've always wanted one of these machines they are a good quality machine you can get spare parts for them and it's just the right size for my workshop and remember I don't have a lot of choice uh, and that there were a total of three of these machines available when I looked and this was the one with the least amount of wear and the cost was about the same as all the other ones that I looked at I checked again uh, just yesterday and there was a total of zero bridge ports available no sorry there was one uh, $16,000 for a machine that was built in 1990 so you know, nine thousand dollars sixteen thousand dollars I think this was worth it so I hope you got something out of that I hope you sort of realize that yes it's doable uh, and you get a, now an idea of what the true figure is not just the list price you see in the ad and if you've been completely scared off well there are cheaper options out there and you, you need to investigate those and finally I wanted to thank all you people that watch my videos I checked yesterday and my subscriber numbers were up to about 9,300 which was something I never expected and it looks like it's going to go through 10,000 uh, within a couple of weeks and just to thank everyone I figured I would do a little project which I'm considering giving away and you'll see the video coming up with that soon and yeah it's just a way of giving back to the community really so thank you very much and finally, I thought you'd like to see the current state of play with this machine.